Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, one and all, boys and girls, shonen shoujos. How are you guys doing this morning? Welcome to another episode of Good Morning Senpai. Yeah, it is a Friday morning over here in Sydney, Australia right now. The weather is not fantastic. It is raining again, like it was the last episode, but it's on a Friday this time. TGI Friday, know what I'm saying? Anyways, guys, welcome to another episode of Good Morning Senpai. I am your host, the Anime Man, also known as Joey. And if you guys, if this is the first time for you guys, then um, this episode or this video, this podcast thing, YouTube's most kawaii radio podcast show, I talk about the things that I like, things that I don't like, and everything else in between. So. First of all, guys, I hope you guys can hear me. I hope. I mean, you should be able to. Can you hear me? Good. Okay. <laughs> so, um, thank you to everyone, all the live audiences that have come today again. I love you all. Yay! <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, so, let's see here. Hmm. Um, yeah, so, we've already got, like, 25 people watching, so that's freaking fantastic, guys. Um, anyways, guys, uh, without further ado, let's look up some news, shall we? Also, guys, um, live audience, if you guys would like to ask me any kind of questions at all, then please go ahead and do so, and I will answer them along the way. For the time being, though... Let's look through some news. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Okay, guys. Oh, well, this one is kind of interesting. Hmm. Let's see here. Piece of news, Hayao Miyazaki to receive honorary award from the Oscars Academy. Wow. Okay. The Academy of Motion Pictures Arts and Science Board of the Governors voted on Tuesday to award director and Studio Ghibli co-founder Hayao Miyazaki with an honorary award at the Academy's 6th Annual Governors Award on November the 8th. The Governors Awards celebrate lifetime achievements of members of the film industry. The Oscar statuettes of the honorary award is given to quote, to honour extraordinary distinction in lifetime achievement, exceptional contributions to the state of motion picture arts and sciences, or for outstanding services to the Academy. There you go. The Academy previously honoured Miyazaki for his work on Spirited Away with an Oscar for Best Animated Film in 2003. That's kind of cool. Yeah. But, um... Okay, so apparently... Miyazaki received at least three earlier invitations, but he declined each time. Why would he do that? Huh. That's kind of weird. I mean, if you've received an honorary reward, you know, you usually go. But, I guess not. <laughs> it's That was an exception for Hayazaki Miyao. Miyao, bleh, Miyazaki Hayao, apparently. Hmm. What do you think? What do you guys think about that? I think, yeah, he definitely deserves it to get the honorary award, without a doubt. Um, oh, in other news, guys, like news that like I read that like kind of freaking surprised the hell out of me was um, you guys know Twitch right the gaming streaming company or the gaming streaming website um, that there were all those like I think I mentioned in like one of my videos that um, Google or like YouTube bought Twitch but apparently that's not so like I read an article I think on Wednesday saying that Amazon bought Twitch for 970 million dollars. I was like, what? Amazon? Like, of all companies, Amazon.com bought Twitch. And I was thinking, like, what? Like, okay, I can understand, like, Google or, like, YouTube buying Amazon, but, like, why would 
why would Amazon buy it? Amazon, of all people, like. And then, apparently, like, I looked at the stats for Twitch, and apparently Twitch is, like, becoming, like, so freaking popular. I think, um, I need to go on to, I need to find that article, actually. But, um, from what I read, like, Twitch is, like, gaining so much reputation, uh, that it's ridiculous. Like, they are getting a lot of traffic. And by a lot, I mean, like, more than probably you guys think traffic. It is ridiculous. Um, let's see. Like, you know, obviously, like, Twitch was, like, is starting to, help, like, hold their, um, they were starting to, you know, do stuff besides gaming. Like, obviously, they were streaming, you know, things from, like, E3 and, like, other, um, MLGs and speedruns and things like that. But, um... Yeah, Amazon. I guess, I guess, like, Amazon are kind of, diver you know, like, as someone said in the chat, that they're, yeah, they're, they're diversifying, definitely, but, you know, I'm just trying to think, like, what can Amazon lead? Like, what, what, what can they, what can Amazon use to, you know, make money from Twitch? Or maybe they're just, like, because they've bought the rights to Twitch now, maybe they're just casually just making the revenue from Twitch, I don't know. But, or maybe they're going to do something like, uh you know, stream, like, I guess they're gonna, they're probably gonna, like, get all the ad revenue and things like that too, but, either way, guys, like, now that Twitch is, like, not an independent, uh, company anymore, the fucking copyright claims are just gonna, like, destroy, like, users, I think, it's gonna destroy me, either way, but, um, hey, here we go, okay, so why everyone wanted to buy Twitch, I'm on kotaku.com.au, guys, if you guys wanna know where I'm getting my news from, um, let's see here. Okay, here we go. Here's some stats for you guys. Uh, 15 million people watched the 2013 World Series, alright? But 32 million people watched the Season 3 League of Legends Championship. The Twitch Plays Pokemon, which is, like, you guys will know, is a very famous thing that happened on Twitch, um, had 80,000 people watching it simul simultaneously for days. Like, you know, that's 80,000 people with no lives. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, it's it's rude to say, but it's the fact. Like, you know, it's Twitch is gaining a lot of followers, and it's amazing how they're doing so. Like, you know, it's not just it's not just fucking you know like a live streaming place. It's like there's like proper community and shit going in and out of there, and um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. But what do you guys? Yeah, what do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about Amazon buying Twitch? I think it's inter it's an interesting move for Amazon. And um, you know, nine hundred and seventy million dollars. I think I think that's the smartest thing that Amazon did, to be honest. Like everyone was kind of against the idea of um, Google and YouTube buying Twitch because, of course, for those you know, like because before that, because if you guys don't use Twitch or don't know about Twitch, Twitch didn't have or doesn't have a copyright like, as a, as a harsh of a copyright flagging system, or like, you know, analytics, as YouTube does. Like, YouTube is like, oh, that's copyrighted? Nope, we're gonna flag you. Like, you, your Twitch was a little bit easier on that, because they were like, yeah, whatever, just stream whatever you want. And I was doing so, and a lot of other people were doing so too, but now that Twitch is not an independent company anymore, Amazon's gonna, you know, like, pretty much be like, oh, no, 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 you guys are using copyrighted music, you can't do that anymore, you know? So, um... But I mean, yeah, but everyone was still behind, or well, like, you know, there were actually, there was a hashtag, like, kind of getting popular on Twitter, which was hashtag rest in peace Twitch, just based on the fact that, you know, if Google did buy Twitch, like they do fucking buy everything else, then it was like, nah, that's it, like, Twitch is no more, and actually a lot of people, when they, when that rumor was spreading around that Google had bought Twitch, Everybody moved away from Twitch and actually went to a different streaming site called Hitbox.com, which I have a few friends on there that do streams over there. But um, yeah, now that Amazon's bought it, I guess more people are coming back to Twitch. I don't know. I don't know how many of you guys watch live streams. I, for one, love watching speedruns on Twitch, just because they're entertaining as hell. Love speedruns. I think <laughs> I've wasted a lot of time watching speedruns. I think. 
I think the most time I ever spent watching speedruns was I watched this guy do a speedrun of Chrono Trigger on the SNES. And that took him like six and a half hours. Now, mind you, like Chrono Trigger is like a long ass game. It's an RPG made by Square Enix. Or was it Squaresoft? I don't know. Yeah, someone's gonna have to double check me on that. I think it was either it was either Square Enix or Squaresoft. I don't know if Square. I don't know if Squaresoft had already merged with Enix at that time or not. Either way, it's, it was done by Squaresoft or Square Enix, whichever. P same people who made Final Fantasy, if you guys didn't know. But um, you know, like those kinds of like those kinds of you know big like RPGs are just you know they're f they're f they're long. You know, they take like tens of hours or even hundreds of hours. In the case of Chrono Trigger, Chrono Trigger is a very long game. I think it's like average is like 100 hours less play or something. So it's a long ass fucking game. And this guy did it in six hours. It's like, damn, I'm jelly. So yeah, I watched this guy play Chrono Trigger for six hours and beat the fucking game in six hours. It's like, damn. You, you, you swag. You swag. Yeah. But, um. I use Twitch quite a lot, guys. Um, I stream, like, whenever I'm bored, or, um, when I'm doing a, a joint channel thing for, well, with my friend, Mr. A. Honda. We do this thing called Pixels from the Past, where we just play co-op, or single-player retro games, and just stream over them. I think I remember the longest stream that we did was about 10 hours. That was fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, that's the Twitch story. But, um, yeah, I'm still really surprised that Amazon bought it, of all, of all people. Wait. Hmm. Anyways, guys. Um. I also, like, yesterday, um, I was talking to one of my buddies on YouTube, Dark Scarab, and, uh, and we saw this, like, really cool... Well, I mean, there were a few, few games that we saw we're really looking forward to. The first one is obviously Pokken. You know, the Pokemon Tekken crossover. Pretty much when, yeah, pretty much when Pokemon meets Tekken, and it becomes Pokken. Right? I thought it was pretty clever. And, um, and yeah, it's pretty much, guys, if you guys don't, if you guys didn't hear about it, Japan are creating an arcade fighting game with Pokemon. Like, that sounds fucking awesome in itself. Like, I, like, we both saw the footage for that, and it was like, whoa, that's so sick. But then, I <laughs> think my friend Tom was like, but it's only in Japan. I was like, lol. <laughs> I get, I'm going to Japan at the end of the year, so I might be able to play it. But I don't know if it's going to be out by then. If it is, then hell yeah, totally playing it. Yeah, but um, if, like, if we, like, you know, it's going to be awesome. If they, if they bring it over to, like, the Western countries like America, or Australia, Europe, and things like that, then that is going to make so much money. Like, Nintendo doesn't understand. I guess by only releasing it in Japan, they're probably going to, like, test it. Like, just kind of small range test, saying things like, you know, um, like, you know, they're probably like, oh, we don't know if it's, like, everyone is, like, the concept may sound good, but it may not work in practice. So like, uh, for the time being, let's just release it in Japan, and then see where it goes from there. If it gets lucky, then, then yeah, we'll we'll release it everywhere else. But um, I think that's going to be really interesting. The images that came out for it and the videos that came out for it are just like, like damn, looks fucking awesome. So yeah, that's that. Um, another game actually that uh Tom and I were looking at was this really mind-bending game based around 4D. Um, I'm just trying to look for it now. Oh, here it is. It's called Miegakure. Um, apparently it's, it's a game that's been in production or in development for about four years now. And it's pretty much like, if you guys have ever played, if you guys own a Wii or have ever heard of Paper Mario, right? There's the Wii version of Paper Mario, which is called Super Paper Mario where the main focus on that was you press a button and you go from a regular 2D platformer like you know all, pa all Mario games were and Paper Mario games were to 3D and back so 
you're like, oh, there's a wall right in front of me in 2D. What should I do? Oh, I'll switch to 3D and just walk around it. You know, it was like that, except this game, Miegakure, is instead of 2D to 3D and back, it's 3D to 4D and back. Yeah. Get your mind around that. It's weird. If you guys want to look it up, then just type in、uh, Miegakure on YouTube and I'm sure you'll look for some videos on it. Or you go to Kotaku.com and just look for Miegakure. But it's like. It's, I looked at this trailer or I looked at like, this development video of this game and it's like, holy shit, like, this is like, mind bending. Like, the, 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 the concept around it is really simple. It's pretty much like Paper Mario, like 2D to 3D perspective. And you know, like, you know, looking at a 3D, like, what would a 3D world look like for a person who can only look in 2D? Right? It'll look weird. Right? But, you know, and, that, and that's already confusing enough as it is. But then they put it, like, they stepped it up a notch and they turned from 3D to 4D. And it's like, you watch this, you watch the, the game unfold and it's like, whoa, 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 what is going on? But then once you understand, like, that concept of, you know, 2D to 3D but only looking in a 2D perspective, then, you know, it's like, it's, it's weird. It's, it's weird, like, when you look at it, it's like, whoa, who needs drugs when you have this game, kind of thing. But, either way, guys, this game hasn't come out yet, it's still in development, but I am totally gonna play this game once it comes out. It looks so cool. I just love these kinds of. It's a puzzle platformer, as well, obviously.、Um, and it's gonna, be,、uh, it's gonna be released for PC, Max, and Linux,、uh, and some consoles, I believe. But there's no release date on it yet because obviously it's been in development for four years and they're still trying to work around it because it is a very weird concept and a very difficult game to master. But looking at it right now, it's like. It's. It, it's so cool looking. It is ridiculously cool looking. So, guys, definitely go check it out.、Um, or check out the trailers. And it is, it is a huge. It is a, yeah, as Tom said, it is a huge mindfuck. It is a huge mindfuck.、Um, and obviously, there have been、um, talks on、uh, Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, and there being like different, I guess, DLCs. So, there's been like a DLC for.、Um, let's see, there's been a DLC where you can, you can play as、um, Legend of Zelda characters, you can play as Animal Crossing characters.、Uh, there was another one. But I just looked at it and I was like, <laughs> that's pretty sick. And I think I want to buy a Wii U, but I don't know. Like, should I? I mean, everyone has said, like, after, after watching E3 this year, and like Nintendo just like shitting all over Sony and Microsoft,、um, I, like, a lot of my friends actually, and a lot of people in general, sold their PS4s and Xbox Ones and bought a Wii U. And now, to a long time Nintendo fan like myself, that's like awesome. That's great to see.、Um, yeah, so I'm like, hmm. And I, and I looked at like Mario Kart 8 and it's like, oh my god. It's, it looks so cool. <laughs> it looks so cool. But, you know, what should I. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Some people say it is, some people say it's not. I don't know. Either way, I don't have money, so I can't buy it right now. But, um. Yeah, so that's how that's going.、Um, anyways, guys,、um, moving on to stuff about my life.、Um, I'm doing alright with uni at the moment.、Um, I just got through a tough week.、Uh, my friend Michael, who's in the chat right now, will understand what I'm talking about. But、um, yeah, we just,、uh, I, got, I grabbed myself, if you guys didn't watch my、uh, latest video,、uh, which is a vlog, I talked about a little bit. But、um, I got myself an internship in Japan, got myself a job. So at the end of this year, when I'm going、uh, from mid November to the end of February, so about roughly three and a half months, I'm going to be working in I'm going to be working in Tokyo this time,、uh, working at a, a web design,、uh, UX design. For those of you guys who don't understand, don't worry about it. It's pretty much I design stuff for the masses. 
But yeah, um, the, the the company that I got the internship in is really cool because it's connected to it, it's pretty much like a it's pretty much like an outsourcing company um, that does that creates uh, design like that creates promotional products, uh, promotional posters, uh, websites, all that kind of like marketing kind of stuff for other companies. So. Um, so naturally, being an outsourcing company, I get to interact with all these other bigger companies, right? And what's the most cool is that most of these companies that we're being outsourced by are gaming companies and anime production companies. So I was like, oh, two things that I freaking love. And if I can make a connection with those bigger companies, then I might be able to move into the gaming industry or the anime industry or the manga manga and anime industry which is like awesome yeah <laughs> but you know we're gonna have to see how it goes um, either way guys I'm really excited to work there and since I'm gonna be going to Japan at the end of the year like I said before I have to buy myself a laptop so I'm still trying to save up money for that so I can get a decent laptop so hopefully I can get at least a few videos out a week. I won't be able, unfortunately I won't be able to bring out a video a day um, like I do now just because, you know, I'm going to be working quite a bit while I'm over there. I'm just going to be focusing on work. Um, so that's going to be a priority, unfortunately. But I might, I'll hopefully be able to get at least a video out maybe once every two days maybe once every three days if I'm, you know, not as busy. But yeah, guys, that's, anyway, that's later on. That's like, that's like two and a half months from now. So for the time being, uh, enjoy at least a video a day. Uh, so yeah, guys. Um, and also, what else is going on? Not much, I don't think. I got my phone fixed as well, finally. Anyway, I won't go into that because you guys can see it in the vlog. But, um, something I've wanted to talk about in this uh, podcast was revolving around my channel and revolving around the comments that I've been getting and I think this applies to like every YouTuber out there that like brings out videos and like gets comments and interacts with the, their own community but I've no started to notice that um, I, I read this tweet by uh, this big uh, YouTuber called Jacksepticeye who I actually have come to start loving quite a bit and he even said it himself and that kind of inspired me to talk about it in this podcast is that YouTube comments are getting dumber and dumber like when we say like when we say dumber we mean like substantially dumber like they were dumb to begin with there were a lot of there are a lot of there are a lot of stupid people in the comment section but year by year like he's like Jacksepticeye started to notice I've started to notice every youtuber out there started to notice that the YouTube comment section is just getting dumber and dumber and dumber like you read the you read half these comments and you're like what the fuck like stop why are you why 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 did you like you, did you seriously just say that did you seriously just comment that on my video like okay I'll, gi I'll give you guys some examples okay um I don't want to give like I don't want to give like a particular example because I don't want that person to get bashed but although some of you guys have already bashed him apparently but um there was this typical case in my video or in my videos is the Corpse Party series. Now I don't like to harp on about the Corpse Party series, um, you know, because like you know, a lot of people, a lot of you guys enjoy it. A lot of you guys do enjoy it, and it's and it's great to see. But um, I've been getting like a t really typical example is I would bring out a Corpse Party episode. You know, they're half an hour long. They take a long time to edit, a long time to translate. And I'm hoping you guys not understand how difficult it is to translate, especially when I've got stuff of my own and I don't do YouTube full time. Um, but, you know, I'd bring out an episode of Course Party and I'd be like, here you go, guys. And most of you guys are like, yay, Course Party episode, thank you. 
I'm like, no problem. Thank you, thank you for watching. You know, I appreciate you guys, you know, getting excited for every course party episode that I do. And every now and then, I'd get these comments where I would release the episode like the the video would be up probably like an hour. All right, so I just uploaded it. It's been up on my channel for about an hour, and I get these comments which are like, "When's the next episode coming out?" Like, dude, shut the fuck up and watch the episode and stay patient. Like, you guys, like, people don't understand how long video editing takes. Especially when you're translating. Like, you guys think, like, there are, there are these people, there are occasionally these people, I know, like, hopefully none of you guys in the chat right now are like this. But if not, then I'm just gonna say it straight up to your faces. But some of you some some people do not understand that editing videos isn't doesn't happen like that it doesn't happen in the space of 5 minutes like you can't just record a video and then be like oh yeah yeah i'm done boom it's up you know it it doesn't it doesn't happen like that it's it's not that simple like the editing process is where all the work goes in and you know, it's and it's just frustrating. Like I don't, I don't even have the, I don't even have the, you know, the the patience or like the audacity to even comment back on this guy or girl, saying, "Oh, when's the next episode coming out?" Like, dude, just watch the fucking video, and shut up. You know, like I put this up for you guys. Like, like a another thing actually is like these people who think that you know they're like. A typical example last episode actually that I just got absolutely pissed the fuck off about which said you know like oh um I don't mean to be like disrespectful or anything but like could you like only focus on course party because you're like really behind and you know I just want you to think about this okay and I was just thinking to myself listen here you little shit because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you're like fucking 12 or something but do you want to try and translate these videos just saying, like, do you want to sit down on my seat and translate these videos for me? Because if you want to, then go ahead. You know, I'll happily let you translate and edit this video. I can just do, you know, the, the recording. And then you, you know, if you want to see it so much, then you can come and translate this video for me. You know, because frankly, I don't have to translate the video. I can just upload it as without translations because I can understand it fine. And I'm enjoying it fine. You guys can see my reactions. But, you know, like, I'm not doing... I'm not translating it for myself. I'm translating it for everybody else watching. You know? Like... Like, what... What... Like... In what right mind do you have the right to say, Oh, can you just focus on Corpse Party? Like, no! I don't want to focus on Corpse Party. Because my channel isn't a Corpse Party only channel. There are lots of Corpse Party channels out there. But, you know, I'm not a Corpse Party channel. I don't want to be branded as a Corpse Party channel. Okay? And, frankly, I don't have th the time to, tr you know, to translate Corpse Party. Because if I, if I had just focused on Corpse Party, then, you know, because there are some people who go onto my channel, yes, you, you guys may not believe this, but there are some people who have subscribed to me who don't watch the Corpse Party videos. Like, the majority of them do, but some people don't, right? And that means that the some people who don't watch the Corpse Party videos watch everything else. So they're looking forward to everything else that comes out. So that's why I don't want to just do Corpse Party. Because, frankly, Corpse Party isn't even my favorite game. I like it, but it's not my favorite game, and it's not the only thing I want to do. Like, you know? So, like, some of these people are just, they're just ungrateful. They're like, you know, they think that it's like, they think I'm just like a fucking computer behind the screen. You know, just like doing translating on the spot. Like, you know, like, oh, okay, I finished recording this video. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'll just start this program that does all the fucking translating for me. Oh, it's done, okay, let's upload it. No, it's not like that. You guys need to, some people just need to understand that, you know, 
I I do this. I don't do this for myself. Well, I mean, I do, but I just do this so that you guys can enjoy the story with me. That's why I translate it. You know? And they're so annoying. They really are. And those are the kind of people who will never be able to make videos on YouTube. Frankly saying. Because, you know, they don't understand that the bulk of the effort that goes into making YouTube videos isn't the recording. Recording is easy as shit. You sit, you slay like a 30 minute video, all you do is just sit in front of a computer for 30 minutes and just record and talk over it. Right? The recording is easy. That part's easy to do. Where the real effort goes in and where, you know, the majority of how good your video becomes goes into is whether or not the video has been edited well. Like, if you can edit a video well, then it doesn't matter how shit of a game it is or how shit of a commentary it is. If you can edit that shit well and make it look good, then, you know, then it becomes a good video. Now, I'm not saying that my videos are good in any way. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to suck my own dick here. But, you know, it's, it's, it's just frustrating, you know? I heard, can you guys understand this? Like, it, it is frustrating. And, you know, I can easily just not play Cause Party. Because, you know, or not record Cause Party and bring out the next episode. Because, frankly saying, you're, you know, the, the people who, the people who complain like, Oh, 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 like, like, you know, when's the next Corpse Party? You know, you should only focus on Corpse Party. We want the next Corpse Party episode. Those are the people who are going to be in the shit if I don't bring out the next episode. I can easily just enjoy the video. I can easily just enjoy the game, playing it by myself, not recording, because I can understand the Japanese and I can understand the game fine without translations. It's those kinds of people who are going to miss out. So really, they're digging their own grave saying, you know, this ignorant shit, you know? I, I, I hope you guys do, un I hope you guys do understand this, and, you know, I just, I just needed to bring that out. Like, another thing is, like, you know, people who comment on every single one of my fucking videos that say, oh, yeah, uh, when's the next Corpse Party video coming out? Or, like, can you bring out the next Corpse Party video? Like, saying that isn't gonna make me go any faster, you know? Luckily, recently, there have been more and more people who have started to get that and have started to become more patient with that kind of stuff, you know? They're just like, oh yeah, you know, you can just bring it out whenever you want, we understand that you've got other stuff that you want to do and you, you know, you want to like try and bring out different kinds of videos in like a space of time, you know? And I'm like, thank you, I really do appreciate, like, you guys are the best. Those kinds of people are the best kind of people in this community. But, you know, every now and then you just get these ignorant little shits who are like, you know, when's the next Cause Party video? Can you bring out the next Cause Party video? Like, um, yeah, I will. After I'm fucking done with it. You know, like... <laughs> I just... I don't understand. I don't understand. Like... Can you guys be patient for just a little longer, please? Just a little longer. Because, frankly, I think all the people who think, you know, they're like, who say stuff like, can you bring out the next Horse Party video, or can you just only focus on Horse Party, think that I do YouTube for a living. I don't. I wish I did, but I don't. I don't do YouTube for a living, I only do YouTube as a hobby, therefore I can't put all of my time into YouTube, because I go to university, you know? I have a course that I have to do. I've got, well I don't have a job now, but I will have a job in Japan, right? And I'm going to get a job next year as well, hopefully. But, you know, it's, it's, uh Like, it is just... It's just frustrating. And Jacksepticeye, like, put it best when he said that kind of stuff. And 
another, another, and you know, like another thing is like Cinnamon Toast Ken as well, which is another YouTuber that I quite like. And he recently did a video about talking about his depression and um, him like, you know, saying like, you know, YouTube may be like a dream job for a lot of people, but you know, it's it's not the best job in the world, and there are its drawbacks. Like. You know, he was. It, it's a great video, guys. You should definitely watch it because it really he speaks for all YouTubers out there, saying, you know, yeah, the people who don't do YouTube might think that YouTube is like the best hobby or best job in the world, but really it's not. It is just as stressful as any other job or any other, you know, like I don't want to like I can't really relate to that in that respect because I don't do YouTube as a job. Like I said, it's just a hobby of mine. But you know, it's. It's just, yeah, the comments are getting dumber and dumber and dumber. And it's, it's disappointing. It is. And, you know, people say, like, oh, you can just ignore those comments. You know, just, like, people say, like, you know, typical saying, hate is gonna hate. Hate is gonna hate, but, you, can, you know, and just, like, saying, like, oh, just ignore those people. Ignore those comments. And I do. I do. I've started to ignore those comments. But it's hard to ignore it when every time I go to my notifications and see that I've got a new comment on another video, at least one or more of those comments is, when is the next Corpse Party video coming out? Can you only focus, focus on Corpse Party? Yeah, it's, it's disappointing. It's, it is disappointing, but anyways, I just, I just need to get that out of my system. Sorry guys. Yeah, it's been, yeah. But, on the plus side, guys, the rest of you guys are fucking awesome. I just wanted to let you guys know that. I don't think I... I don't think I say that enough to you guys. But I really do mean it, like, like you guys are, like, the best community that I could have. And it's great. It is great. So thank you to everybody else. Um... Alright guys, anyways, that's enough of that kind of dark shit. Um, if you guys need, want to ask me questions, now's the time. Q&A time. Um, I think I saw a question before which was like, uh, what is my favourite Studio Ghibli film? Um, since we're talking about Studio Ghibli, if you guys missed the first half of the, or the first 30 minutes of this podcast, to all, to all you people that just joined in, hello. Um... Studio favorite Studio Ghibli film, huh? Hmm. I don't know. I've got a lot. There are a lot of Studio Ghibli films that I love. Um, because I mean, I grew up watching Studio Ghibli. Um, probably I'd have to say my favorite is. Princess Mononoke. Only because that movie was like my childhood. I watched that movie so many times. So many times. I could probably recite the entire movie. That's how many times I've seen that shit. It is fantastic. It is great. Um, yeah. But, um, that's probably my favorite. Yeah. Um,. Uh, Stephanie Finney says, what's your favorite Pokemon? My favorite Pokemon? Absol. I've said it a few times. Um, if you guys watch my Pokemon series that I do with PokeMMO, or Moemon, technically, because we used an add-on, which... Yeah, Moemon. Um, yeah, Absol is my favorite. And also, it's Ray's favorite. It's probably why we like each other. Not in that way. Even, even though we've been shipped. That's another thing. <laughs> the fucking fan picks and the fan and the uh the the, fa- the fan picks wow the fan fix uh that you guys send us is like is hilarious um anyways um okay dave says hey dave <laughs> says favorite anime opening tune oh my god dude dave that is a difficult question to answer because frankly there are way too many Way too many. My f- current favorite one, I'd have to say, is um, the opening of Tokyo Ghoul. Only because uh, the band that did 
the opening. Or、well, the guy who did the opening is TK from the band Nin to Shite Shigure, which is like my favorite band of all time. And so when I heard it the first time, I was like, Yes! <laughs> it is so good! Oh my god! So yeah, currently my favorite is the Tokyo Ghoul opening. I'm, all, I'm listening to that shit on repeat.、Um, my all time favorite though, I'm not too sure. Like I said, there's too many.、Um, okay. So, Dot Mirai says, which anime would you recommend for someone who wanted to start watching anime? Um, I mean, it really depends what you like. Because, you know, everybody likes different kinds of genres, and since there are so many anime series out there, it's difficult to, it's difficult to pick, like, your favorite.、Um, I suggest not starting with a mainstream anime. Not starting. I'll just re emphasize that again. Not starting with a mainstream anime. Because if you start with a mainstream anime, you're going to end up on mainstream anime. So I'd say watch an anime series that is it's, it's not exactly underground, but is lesser well known. Like, you know, not like, so don't watch, like, don't start off watching One Piece, you know,、um, Naruto, Fairy Tail,、uh, what else was there? Bleach, you know. Death Note, like everybody, everybody's seen all that. Watch an anime series that you have never, or like Attack on Titan, don't, don't like watch that. I mean, you can watch those after you start, like, you know, looking at other anime series, but like, watch ones that are lesser well known, I think. And also, try and watch every single genre that you can, or as many genres as you can. Because if you watch all the genres, then you'll know which ones you like, and then therefore you can go look for series that fit under that genre, or fit under that kind of bracket. And then, yeah, and then after that, you can move on to the mainstream anime if you really do like anime. Because you might start watching anime and be like, oh, I don't really like anime that much. So then you might stand it there.、Um, but yeah, I don't know.、Um, watch, I don't know, I'm just trying to think of an anime series that not many people know about, but is also awesome.、Uh, hmm. There you go. Ergo Proxy. Watch Ergo Proxy. That was an awesome series. I give it a 9 out of 10.、Uh, yeah. Anyways. Yeah, so that's, that's the. Yeah.、Um, can you do a draw my life?、Um, I mean, I could, but my life isn't interesting enough to do a draw my life. And I can't really do a draw my life since I, I haven't even. Like, my life hasn't even been going on for 20 years yet, guys. I'm still 19. What the hell am I going to draw about? Like, you know. Like, wh- what am I going to draw about in my draw my life? If you guys, like, really want to, then, like, I guess, but I-, I don't see the point of a draw my life right now. Maybe I'll do it in, like, 10 years' time when I actually have stuff to write about, you know? Or draw about. Excuse me. Um. Nat V says, What's your favorite genre? My favorite genre of what? Anime? Music? Games? Like, what? I'm, I'm guessing anime.、Um, my favorite genre is.、Uh, my favorite genre is either rom com or psychological horror. I know they're like two opposite sides of the spectrum, but yeah. Oh, and comedy. Of course, comedy. So, rom com, comedy, and psychological horror. But not all at the same time, because that would just be weird. Um. What's your favorite rom com anime by Drandit121? Favorite rom com anime? Oh my god. That's another difficult one because I've seen so many rom com animes. Um. Rom com, rom com. Clanad is rom com. Um. Pretty much all the key. All, all series made by Key Studios is rom com, so. They're obviously my favorites. So that's like Clanad,、uh, Canon, Air. Little Busters, they're all freaking awesome.、Um, I don't know, actually. Other than that, not too sure. If you guys go onto like my,、um, if you guys go onto like my myanimelist.com thing,、um, then you know, you guys can see like my all the series that I've seen, so definitely go check that out.、Um, oh, yeah, Omish, yeah. You're right. Yahari Oren no Seishu Nabukon ya Machigatteru is freaking awesome. 
I love that series so much. I'm buying the rest of the light novels when I go to Japan. Yeah, so that's another one too. Anyways, guys, like on in the description section of this live stream, uh, and like on the about section of my channel, there's uh, my my myanimelist.com um, channel or account, and all the anime series that I've ever seen there are all on there. So check that all out. Yeah. Um, okay, Snow's Leopard says, "What is your favorite horror anime?" Um, my favorite horror anime is either Another or Higurashi. Yeah. Another only because it was like awesome anime series and I also read the novel and that was even more awesome. And Higurashi only because it is like the like probably the first horror anime series that I ever saw. And like the biggest mindfuck series that I ever saw. Yeah. So either Higurashi or Another. Yeah, but when I say Higurashi, I mean like the, the first two seasons of Higurashi when it was actually like still a horror. Um, I actually prefer that the manga series of Higurashi more than the anime, only because the manga series was like way more like horror based than actual like just scares. Um, so yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, Anna. Oh my god, I'm gonna butcher your name. Anna Guiterez? Guiterez, I guess. Uh, my favorite comedy anime. Probably Gintama. I've cried laughing watching that series. Either that or... Um, either Gintama or Setokai Yakuindo. Yeah. But then my all-time favorite comedy light novel series is Setokai no Ichizo. Yeah, there you go. Um, are you into any sports anime, says Stephanie Fanny. Um, not really. Probably the only, any, they're probably, sp the only sports anime that I ever really got into was Slam Dunk, only because I grew up reading the manga of that, and that is like my all-time favorite st sports manga series. Yeah. Um, so Slam Dunk is awesome. The anime was also good, but I definitely have a connection more to the, the, the manga series than I do the anime. Um, yeah. But, um, uh, the Ace of Games says, is canon appropriate? Uh, yeah, I guess. Depends on your level, it depends on your threshold of appropriate. What is appropriate to you, maybe what is appropriate to me. Yeah? Um, let's see, Maggie Taylor says, favorite sad anime, Clanad. End of story. <laughs> I also, I, I did an entire video of it, guys. The top five anime series that will make you cry like a bitch. Go check that shit out. Um, Jesus Garcia says, favorite shoujo anime? Shoujo? Um, I don't watch a lot of shoujo. So I don't really know. Um, probably... Hmm... I'm not too sure what's considered shoujo and what's not because there are a lot of anime series that look like shoujo or feel like shoujo but aren't shoujo. Probably Saishu Heki Kanojo is my favorite shoujo. Either that or Skitte Inayo. Yeah, those two were good. Um, but then recently I also watched um, Bokura. Um, what was it called again? Shit. Bokura Minna Kawaiso. Yeah. That was another one that I also quite liked. But that was more comedy than shoujo. Although, it was shoujo, technically. I think it's based off a shoujo manga series, anyway. Not too sure. Someone's gonna have to double-check me on that. Um... <sighs> okay, Emily McFluttershy. <laughs> nice. Says, if you have seen Madoka Magica, what is your f or who is your favorite character from it? I have seen Madoka Magica, but... Uh, I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. I haven't finished it. <laughs> I think I watched up to like episode six. My favorite character is probably uh, is probably Madoka. Yeah, I just like Madoka. Uh, Tenshi Senpai. Hello, Tenshi Senpai. Says favorite character ever. Favorite character ever. Fuck. Um, probably Konata from Lucky Star. Uh, Karadashio says favorite sci-fi anime. Sci-fi. Hmm. Favorite sci-fi anime. I don't know, like, when you say sci-fi, you mean, like, like, mecha, or, like, cyberpunk? Because they're all technically under sci-fi. Um, my favorite movie 
that's probably if that falls under sci-fi is Akira. Um, favorite sci-fi series though? Not sure. Uh, Maggie Taylor says least favorite anime series. Least favorite. Huh. I don't think I've seen enough bad series. Although I've seen a few. Um, Man Girl was really crap. Uh, so was. Okay. Here's one that I'll probably get a lot of hate for as well. But a series that I started watching because everybody said was really good, but I ended up really not liking at all was Auburn High School Host Club. I thought that anime series was so not funny. I could not. I wasn't even smile. I couldn't even smile watching that series. Everyone's saying like, "Oh my god, Auburn High School was so funny," and I was. I watched like the like probably up to like episode like six or seven, and I was like, "When does this start to get funny?" It is not funny at all at the moment. I cannot. I'm not even smiling. I found myself not even smiling. I'm like, really? This isn't even really funny. So I just dropped the series. I I didn't even like it at all. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I didn't like it. Anyways, uh, Twink BC says best manga. Oh, for fuck's sake, guys! <laughs> you guys don't understand how many manga series I have up there. Um, my favorite manga of all time is probably Bo 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 Bo. Um, only because. That shit is hilarious, and again, it is my childhood. Um, yeah. Let's see. King of Zero Hundred says, "Have you seen any good war brackets non mech anime? Good war anime? Um, Grave of the Fireflies. That was good. Yeah. Other than that, I'm not too sure. Um, let's see." Uh, Jholic91 says, What was your reaction when school days went horribly wrong? I kind of did a nope at first. But then, you know, one of you guys, one, one of my subscribers actually made me open my eyes about it and I made a video on it. Look up school days on my video list and you should come up with it. And now I actually quite appreciate school days for being a lot cleverer than it looks. Um, Michael Bernardi Bernardoni says, have, have you ever watched Please Sisters? No, I haven't, but I have heard about it, so I'll probably watch it sometime soon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of, uh... God damn, why is there so much spam in the comments? Whatever. Anyways. Uh, yeah, guys, like, you might think, like, uh, there's a lot of people in the chat right now that don't appreciate School Days, but... Um... Like, watch my video on it where I kind of explain what my subscriber explained to me. And, you know, I've actually heard from a lot of people that that video made them change their way of viewing School Days. I mean, yeah, he, you know, may... He may, you know, the, the series may have been, like, really shit watching it the first time around. But if you think about it further, then you might actually like it. I don't know. It, changed, it made me change my mind about it, and I think it's quite clever. But, um... Yeah, anyways. Uh, oh, good question. Jesus Garcia says, Joey, what woe from Shaft do you think is the best? Guys, if you didn't know, I freaking... After Key Studios... Or, actually, sorry. Not Key Studios. After, like... When it comes to anime production companies, like the guys who actually do the animation, my favorite my favorite studio of all time is Shaft Studios. Now, if you guys don't know who Shaft Studios is, they did series like um, Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei, uh, what else did they do? They did Madoka Magica. Um, they also did, and my favorite, uh, answering your question, Jesus, my favorite from Shaft is the Monogatari series. That series is fantastic. I read the novel as well. It is like, oh my god, this is so clever. And, fun little fact, guys, the guy who read, uh, the guy who wrote the original novel for the Monogatari series is also the original author for Medaka Box. Which is another awesome series. Not done by Shaft, but is another awesome series. So yeah, the more you know. Um, Lucy Carmen says, are you Japanese? I am half Japanese, yes. But I am fluent in Japanese. Um, yeah, but the but yeah, Jesus, um, the Monogatari series is like fucking awesome. Uh, Dave says, are you going to go to watch the new Dragon Ball movie when you go to Japan? P most probably yes. Uh, I need to find the time to do that. But yeah, um, I will most likely go see it. Uh, Twink BC says, Joey, who would you love to cosplay as? 
Um, I was actually talking to when when we went to Sm when I went to Smash this year with my buddy Michael, who's in the chat right now. Um, we would we were saying like, oh, next next year we should like totally go and cosplay or something. And uh, I think we came up with the conclusion of going as what what was it again? I don't even remember. I think I think we said we'd go as Daft Punk. Because we saw someone go as Daft Punk, and we thought that was- I thought that was so cool. Um... Um... Yeah. So, I want to try and cosplay one time, but we're gonna have to see. Uh, Omega the Catastrophe says, Any thoughts on No Game No Life, if you have seen or heard of it? Yes, I have seen it. Uh, interesting story, actually. Uh, while I was in Japan, this is before No Game No Life turned into an anime series. Last year when I was in Japan, I was at a bookstore that I usually go to around my house and I was looking at, you know, all the light novels that had just recently come out and at the front was this series called No Game No Life and I thought, why not? And I looked at the cover and it looked really interesting so I was like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. It was on sale. So I was like, and it just come out. So I was like, yeah, I'll give it a go. So I bought the first volume of No Game No Life, read it, and I was like, holy crap, that was awesome. And then literally the day that I finished reading, um... The day that I finished reading that first light novel series, I found out it turned into an anime series. So I was like, whoa! That's awesome. So I was like saying to like everybody, saying to like all my friends who were like, oh guys, I know what's gonna happen next episode because I literally just finished reading the first volume of the light novel. You mad, bro? <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like No Game No Life. I thought it was really good. Although I would have liked it if they had maybe gone for a little bit more than 12 episodes. I was hoping they'd go for more than... Uh, I was hoping they'd go for at least 24. Um, another thing was like, you know, I was hoping with uh, Tokyo Ghoul that they would go for 24 episodes. But nope, they're only going for 12. That's another great... If you guys like... That's another thing as well. If you guys love Tokyo Ghoul, like the anime series, wait until you read the manga series. Your mind will get fucking blown away. It is so cool. It is so awesome. Yeah. Um, god damn, guys, why is there so much spam in the comments? That sucks. Me. Um, yeah, much spam. Jesus. Uh, oh yeah, Tenshi Senpai says, <laughs> really, Tenshi Senpai? If you could cosplay as a female, who would it be? Kornata. Hell yeah, I'm so going as Kornata. My favorite character of all time. Uh, yeah. Kornata would be freaking awesome. Uh Okay. The Ace of Games says good source of learning Japanese, both read and write. Um Good source of reading Jap uh learning Japanese. Okay, a lot of people have asked me, like, you know, oh when did you start learning Japanese? Like, you know, uh, why are you so good at Japanese? Let's okay, I'm gonna cover it up right here. Uh, I'm gonna like say it right here right now. Do everything that you can. But the two probably most important or most efficient ways of learning Japanese would be, number one, go to Japan. Actually, go to Japan, interact in Japan, and try to only speak Japanese. Um, then you'll understand, like, how difficult Japanese is. The second thing is to make a friend who is Japanese and talk to him or her in Japanese. Because if you don't speak it, then, you know, if you don't speak it, then, like, you know, how are you going to learn it? That applies with any language, really. But especially with Japanese. Now, the one thing that everyone needs to understand with Japanese is that reading it and writing it isn't that important. It really isn't. The thing that you should focus on, if you're starting, if you want to learn Japanese, like I said, this applies with any language, but especially with languages where the reading and where the reading and writing isn't in the alphabet format. Um, reading and writing is just a bonus. If you can read and write, then great. You know, you're you're better than the average. But the f one thing that you should definitely focus on before when when starting off with Japanese is to learn how to say it, to learn how to speak it, to learn how to communicate in it. Because if you can't communicate in it, then there's no way in hell that you'll be able to read or write in Japanese. That's just a solid fact. Um, another thing, guys. I mean, I have an entire video of this. Um, on my channel. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, but I, I said in that video as well that 
you know. To all of you guys that think that I'll be able to get good at Japanese just from reading manga and watching anime, you are completely mistaken. There is no way you might be able to get better at Japanese from watching anime or reading manga, but it's going to take you a lot longer than it should. The best way to learn Japanese, or the best way to learn any language, is to diversify the media, the medium in which you learn Japanese. And by that, I mean, yeah, sure, read manga, go watch anime, but do other stuff too. Maybe listen to, like, if you get a little bit better, listen to the news, listen to the radio, talk to people in Japanese, you know, try to communicate. Go to Japan, go to a convenience store and try to order something, or go to a restaurant in Japan and try to order something in Japanese. Just trying to do that kind of stuff and applying the things you learn to real life is going to increase your level, just naturally. It will. And then just, you know, just constant revision and constant use of new words. Like, I am in the same build right now. Like, I'm in the same thing right now, guys. Like, I... I'm not perfect in Japanese yet. I'm probably like... I'm probably like... I can consider myself fluent, and people consider me fluent, but I'm not at a fluent level that I'm satisfied with. So, I'm the same, guys. If I learn a new word, I try and use that word. Especially when I'm, like, talking to my mom. When, I, when I'm talking to my mom and I just learned a new word, I try and slip in that word into my sentences. And if it comes out weird, my mom picks it up and says, Oh, you, you don't use that word like that. You'd say it like this. And then you'd learn how to say that word. And so the next time you say that word, it, you'll, say, you'll use it properly. And that's all it is to it, guys. It's just revision and dedication. If you're not dedicated to learning Japanese, then don't even start. Because you won't be able to learn it. You'll be able to learn it, but you'll forget it like a month later. There you go. Ugh, why is there so much spam, guys? I don't I don't get it. I don't know. Oh, guys, another thing that I want to talk about actually, going back to my channel, is I did um I did a uh I did uh, I think when was it? Two or three weeks ago? I did, uh, about two or three weeks ago, I did this uh, video call where I do anime character impersonations because apparently people wanted to see me do anime character impersonations. And, um, and, like, I, I did it. And I said in the video, I said, you know, like, tell me in the comments below who you'd like to impersonate next. And I got a lot of course party characters. Right? Which is like, okay, cool. But, the thing is, guys, cosplay characters aren't that diverse. Just saying. Compared to the other characters that I got, who actually have like a proper character, and like a different voice, or like a trait or something, cosplay characters are just, they're bland. They're, they're nothing special. The, things that, the thing that makes the Cause Party series special is the story. The characters are nothing, if you think about it. They're so... They're so generic. Not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, because they fit into the story really well, and therefore Cause Party becomes a good story with good characters. But, like, they're not even worth... They're not even... Like, they're not even worth imitating. Because... They're so, they're so boring. They are. They're boring to impersonate. Like, people were saying, like, oh, you should do, uh, like, like, there was a comment which was like, do Yoshiki and Morishige. And that comment got, like, 50 likes or something. I'm like, guys, do you understand, like, how boring those two characters are? Like, I sound, apparently I sound like Yoshiki just when I speak Japanese normally. So, what is there to impersonate? Even Morishige as well, like, he doesn't say anything special or memorable that other anime characters say. Like, it's boring. It really is. It just... You know, it, it is. It's boring. They are. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyways, that's how it goes. Like, you know, like, characters like, like I did in the last episode, like, characters like Lelouch, for example, he's a diverse character. His voice is different. He has memorable quotes that I can he can say, and 
you know, you can you can tell from just those two, the voice and the quote, who that character is. Right? So, you know, you you know you you know that character, right? Just from that. But, you know, I could say like in the case of like Yoshiki or like Morishige or like whoever it is, somebody from somebody from Corpse Party, right? I could say like a line and try and say it in that voice, and you guys, I, I, I bet you guys, you guys would not be able to tell who it is just from that. Unless I said before, like, I'm, a, I'm going to do this character, and then I do it, you guys would be like, oh yeah, I get it. But if I just go straight into it and be like, guess who that was? You'd be like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. So that's how you know that they're nothing special. They're not. And, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll get, I'll probably get a lot of hate for this, but I don't care. That's how I feel. You know? Everyone has a right to their own opinion, and that's my opinion about it. Yep. Uh... Seriously, though, like, I don't understand how... I mean, I, uh, I probably do understand why Course Party something got so popular. Because PewDiePie, but, you know... Like, I appreciate him, like, doing the Course Party series. You know, because if he didn't do it, then people wouldn't have known about it as much, and it wouldn't have gotten this popular. So you know, to all the people who liked Corpse Party from way before PewDiePie, like such as myself, you know, I appreciate it. Like you know, he enjoyed the series too. So I'm like, cool man, you enjoyed playing the game. That's awesome. You know, but um, yeah, it's just weird how everyone just gets so. I mean, it just goes to show how powerful YouTube. Uh, you know, YouTube is, and PewDiePie is on YouTube. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways. Twink BC says, cutest anime character. Konata. End of story. <laughs> Either that or Fuko from... Oh no, Nagisa from Clan Night. Oh my god, I want to waifu her so much. Um, ow. Shit. Um, let's see. Uh, 8 Bell Angel 8 says, most annoying character. Most annoying? I don't know. Anyways, um, <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, podcast so far, because uh, I love doing it, and you guys like it, so we're all happy, I hope, unless I like, seriously like. Okay, um, Seiko Shinohara, hey Seiko, says, Hey Joey, who are your favorite YouTubers? Ooh, my favorite YouTubers, huh? Um, goddamn. Recently, my favorite YouTuber, or my favorite YouTube channel is Game Grumps. They are so funny. Oh my god, they're so good. Um, game, I love Game Grumps. I love, um, I love Vanos Gaming, he's so awesome, like, his, ed- his videos are edited so well, I've, I've actually, watching his videos has kind of inspired me a little bit, um, with, like, editing styles and things like that, um, who else do I like? I like a lot of Japanese YouTubers, like Hikakin TV. uh, I also like, hmm, I mean, I like Sinanas, I like uh, Eat My Diction. I like 
Jacksepticeye. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of channels I like. But then everybody else from the uh, on my uh, recommended channels list, I also like. They're all awesome channels. The kawaii people, as I call them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're all awesome. Um. Oh man, my nose is running a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, Packer Punch Gaming says, Joey, can you play Close Party and Book of Shadows? Maybe. Um. I guess, but I mean, with the first concerning, like I've already played those two games just before my YouTube channel. Um, so I might not be able to get, like, a proper reaction out of it, you know, since I've already played it and I know what's going to happen, but, like, and also, you know, there are so many other channels out there that have done Course Party, maybe in Book of Shadows not as much, but Book of Shadows is a long-ass game, it is hell long, like, if you think, like, the first Course Party game was long, Book of Shadows is, like, at least twice or maybe three times as long as the first Call of Duty game. And like I said, I don't want to dedicate my channel to Call of Duty. Like, I want to try and do as much stuff as I can. So, there are so many other channels out there that do the first Call of Duty game. Like, the first Call of Duty, you can go watch PewDiePie play the first Call of Duty game, or Cry, or um, Minx play the first Call of Duty game. You know? Those, those guys are funnier than me. So, you know, just go watch their videos. You know, I think just it's it's easier, just you know, because everything's already out. Um, and also with Book of Shadows, like um, go watch um, Manly Badass Hero play Book of Shadows. His his commentary is hilarious, and all the all the episodes are up there too. So yeah, so there you go. Go watch that. Uh, the Ace Game says, "Have you ever watched Jungle Emperor Lil?" Yes, I have. That is another series from my childhood, and a lot of people don't. <laughs> A l funny story, actually. A lot of people don't believe me when I say that The Lion King ripped off Jungle Emperor Leo. They're like, no, no way, no, Lion King was like, like, Disney's like, best work, and it's like, so original, and it was like, so like, revolutionary for like, the anim like, the, uh, the animation, like, the western animation world. You know, there's no way. I'm like, dude, go watch Jungle Emperor Leo. And you will just be able to see how much The Lion King ripped off that series. If you guys don't believe me, then let me let me spill it out for you, okay? Jung okay, so what is Lion King about? Alright, Lion King is about this, you know, the lion cub who has been born. His dad, who is the lion, you know, who is like the lion of the jungle, is also the king of the jungle, right? And so, what happens to the king of the jungle? He dies. And his... This is, by the way, spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen Lion King, which I'm sure every single person in the world has seen, right? But you know that um, Mufasa dies and Simba is sad, right? And the the main reason why Simba uh, Mufasa died was because Scar, Simba's uncle, killed Mufasa, right? And so Simba is pissed off at Scar. And what happens? Simba goes through this journey with his friends... Um, who are the... There was the Toucan. Uh, the Toucan, um, the... And, Simone, and Timon and Pumbaa, right? The three uh, secondary characters. And... And, um... And yeah, and so, like, Simba, like, you know, goes along this travel, like, journey kind of thing, and he matures, and then by the time he matures, he's trying to seek revenge on the guy who killed his father, which is Scar, right? Now, to all of you who guys who haven't seen Jungle Taite Deo, or Jungle Emperor there, or as it's known in the Western world, Kimba the White Lion, right? The storyline of Kimba the White Lion, or Jungle Emperor Leo, goes a little something like this. Leo, right, his dad, is shot by hunters, right? And he's dead. He dies, pretty much, when... when when Leo was little, right? Now, Leo befriends a toucan, I believe. Does it sound... Does this sound, like, similar already? He, he befriends... His fr best friends are a toucan, um... And two other characters that really are similar to Timon and Pumbaa. And he goes on a journey to look for the guy who shot and killed his dad. 
Hey, doesn't that sound like something that I just said? Hmm. I wonder. And another piece of information that you guys may not know is that, right, the the original name of the thing is Jungle Emperor Leo, right? He was in in the in the Japanese in the Japanese uh, series. His name was Leo, right? But they changed his name to Kimba, the White Lion. What does Kimba sound like? Hmm. Let, let's try. Let's try and um, change the word Kimba and put an S in front of it. Does it kind of sound like Simba? I think it does. Yeah. It kind of sounds like Simba, doesn't it? Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. Now, if you guys are thinking, I've I've seen a few of you guys who were like, oh, but. Kimba the White Lion came out in 1997, and Lion King came out in uh, 1994. Uh, the one you are referring to, the 1997, is a movie that is a remake of the original TV series that came out in the 60s. So, that's a debunk right there. And that is what pisses me off about Western movies, and the, the Western movie industry in general. Is that they rip off these... Japanese series and claim it as their own. It's like fucking, um, what's the face? Um, what's it called again? Oh my god, I forgot the name of it. Hunger Games, that's it. The Hunger Games. Everyone was like, oh my god, that series is like so, like, it's so original and it's like nothing we've ever seen before. And all the Japanese people and all the, uh, the anime enthusiasts and like Japan enthusiasts are all just looking at each other and like, uh, dude. You ever heard of uh, Battle Royale before? Because Hunger Games is pretty much just a pussy take on Battle Royale. Yeah. Guys, look up Battle Royale if you've never heard of it. And just read the synopsis of Battle Royale. Because it is pretty much the Hunger Games. Yeah. And just personally, the Hunger Games was a terrible movie. I haven't read the book, but it was a terrible movie compared to compared to fucking Battle Royale. Anyways, that's enough of that. Um, you hate the Lion King? Okay, look, I, I accuse Lion King of like ripping off Jungle Tight Dead Ill, but I still like the Lion King. That was my, my childhood. I like both, but I just don't agree with, you know, Disney claiming that Lion King was totally original. You know? Uh, okay. Okay, Snow's Leopard says most badass anime character in your opinion. Probably Selty from Do Da Da Da. I love her so much. <laughs> yes, Nat V. Battle Royale, look it up. Uh, Bell Angel says favorite and manga that isn't an anime. Um. I'm not too sure. Probably. Oh, M Zero. M. X Zero is my favorite manga series that isn't an anime. I'm surprised that hasn't turned into an anime. Because that manga series is awesome. Yeah, M Zero. Yeah. <laughs> uh Om Nomi. <laughs> I love your name. Om Nomi. Says, would you attend IzumiCon? I don't know what that is, so probably not. <laughs> Uh, okay, Camo Killer 86 says, Do you think people new to anime should watch super long animes such as One Piece from the beginning? I answered this earlier on in the podcast, but no, they shouldn't. Um, I think they should... I think they should watch lesser known anime series first, and then move on to the mainstream. Uh, Purple Popsicle 10 says, Do you listen to Japanese music? Uh, yes. That's why I have Japanese music playing in the background. I'm sure you're... I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'll, I'll stop being a dick. I'm sure you're new to this. Uh, but yes, I do. I love Japanese music. I love J-Rock, J-Pop, J-Metal, everything. J. Um, Maggie Taylor says, Opinion on Vocaloids. I love them so much. <laughs> I love Vocaloids so much. Oh my god. Yes, Twink BC. I love Vocaloid. So much. My favorite is obviously Hatsune Miku. 
but I love all vocalists equally. They're all awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to do, um... Yeah, I need to... I, yeah. Oh, Helsing was another good series, too. Yes. Helsing was also awesome. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Pointer says, Do you listen to Korean music? If so, who's your favorite act? I... It's interesting because I'm not a big fan of K-pop. I don't know why. I'm just... I don't know. I'm not a fan of K-pop. I just can't listen... I can't take it seriously. Especially when watching, like, the music videos. I can't take it seriously. I just... I start laughing. Yeah. I just... I, I don't know. It's... It's... Yeah, I don't know. Oh, Nomi, are you... I says, are you hungry? Yeah, I am. It's almost... I'm gonna have lunch after this. <laughs> uh, uh, Jordan Stern says, so what's going on right now? Um, I'm doing a podcast? Yeah? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm doing a podcast. Also, guys, to all of you guys watching this live right now, um, if you go to my description and you go to my SoundCloud account, that's where I will be putting up the podcast, the entire podcast up there, as well as past podcasts are already up there. Um, when I say past podcasts, I mean there's only one. But um, all the podcasts, if you guys missed any part of it, then you go to my SoundCloud account, the entire podcast will be up there for you to listen to. You can download it. It's free download, so you guys can download it, put it on your MP3 player or iPhone or whatever, and listen to it. If not, you can listen to it just on SoundCloud as a whole so that you guys can catch up on whatever you guys missed. Um, Michael Bernardo Bernardoni says, Hey Joey, how was Japan in your opinion? How, how was... What happened to... What, did something happen to Japan? <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I... I like Japan. Like I said, it's like a second home to me. Or, I mean, it's going to be my home soon because I'm going to be moving there and working there. My plan is to move there and work there when I graduate from uni next year. So, yeah. It'll soon be my new home, Japan. Uh, yeah. Uh, Orbis says, will you play with subs? I'd love to play with you, Catface. Um, I will be playing with subs. Uh, I'll be organizing a Gmod, uh, thing. Like a Gmod tournament? No, not a tournament. Just a Gmod hangout where we play all the Gmod games. Um, when I hit 20,000 subscribers. Yeah. So, if you guys don't have Gmod, then go get it. It's cheap. As hell. And it's like my favorite game of all time. Yeah. <laughs> um, Shannon Cow says, or, or Sal, I don't know, says, recommended, recommend any good anime similar to Death Note. Uh, similar to Death Note? Hmm. Similar to Death Note. I don't know, like, any kind of psychological horror series is similar to Death Note, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah, similar to Death Note, yeah. Uh, the Anime Addict says, Know any good anim action anime that's not like 600 episodes long? Um, every other action anime besides the mainstream ones? Yeah. Just go to my My Anime List account, which is in the description below, to see what series I think is good and what series are not. Tyler Pointer says, What is your favorite Final Fantasy? Uh, Seven is amazing, by the way. At least I think you said you've played Final Fantasy before. Yes, I am a... F F I'm considered an FFF, which is a Forever Final Fantasy... Oh, FFFF. Forever Final Fantasy fan. <laughs> yes, I fucking love Final Fantasy. My favorite... Seven is good. There's no doubt about it. But my favorite is definitely six. Final Fantasy six or Final Fantasy ten. Probably six is my favorite. I like four as well, though. Yeah. So six and four probably is my favorite. Uh... Let's see. God damn, the list is going really quickly. Uh, AJ Thunder says, What is your opinion on Soul Eater? It was okay. The anime was... Uh, the manga was better. Uh, Johnny Joestar. <laughs> Joestar. I guess you like Jojo, huh? Says, What is your favorite light novel? Um, my favorite light novel is the Setokai no Ichizon series. I also do like... Um, the one I'm reading right now is... Uh, what's it called again? Um... Utsurona Hakoto ne uh no Utsurona Hakoto Zero no Maria. Yeah. That one is hectic. Um I also like the Suzumiya Haruhi series as well. And I also do like uh 
No Game No Life is good. Dorada series is good. Um, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, the Boogie Pop series is also good. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are all good. I love all of them. <laughs> uh, Otaku and Panzer says, ever watch Girls and Panzer? No, I haven't. I heard it's, it's like, it's weird. I don't know. I don't think I can get into that series. I never, I never saw it. I don't plan to see it either. Uh, Om Nomi says, most disturbing anime. Disturbing in what way? Like, go like gore? Or... The close Party anime was pretty disturbing. Um... Hmm. Uh, Elf and Leet was disturbing when I first watched it. But then I, I came to love it, and now it's like an awesome, like, 10 out of 10 series. Yeah. Other than that... Oh, like, disturbing as in bad, I'd say, uh, Vivi Red Operation. That was disturbing as in, like, I feel violated watching this series. Um... Yeah. That was a weird series. And I just didn't enjoy it. It wasn't even that good. It's too much, like... Too much, like, jailbait... Fan service. I don't want to go into it. <laughs> uh, okay, the animatic says, If you had to live with only reading manga or only watching anime, which would you choose? Probably only watching anime. No. Ah, oh, oh, fuck, that's difficult. Does only watching anime include movies? Because if not, then... I'd say only reading manga. But if movies are included, I'd only watch anime. Uh, Michael Bernardius Ber Bernardoni, oh, God damn it, I slaughter your name every time, says, what would you rate Mad Father? Uh, uh, eight. Uh, out of ten. Uh, uh, the animatic says, who, brackets, besides Naruto, do you think should be the next Hokage? To be honest, I don't give a shit about Naruto. Uh, Omega the Catastrophe says, most creative anime slash manga slash Final Fantasy weapon in your opinion. There are so many cool ones out there. You're right, there are so many cool ones out there. Um, I think the most creative or like most over the top was the, uh, the final form of, um, the Gurren Lagan, which was like several, like, light years tall or some shit like that. That was fucking crazy. That anime is awesome, by the way. The animatic says, Do you think that you'll always be an anime fan? Probably. Yeah. Unless anime, like, suddenly turns, like, really shit. Which I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't. Um, Yuka Mochida says, Joey, have you seen SAO? And if you have, did you like it? It's okay. It's not as good as everyone said it, it says it is, I don't think. I had, like, I, I, a long time ago, like, right at the start of making this channel, I made a video about how Sword Art Online isn't as good as everyone says it is. It got a little bit of hate for it, but most people agreed with it. Um, everyone says like, oh my god, Sword Art Online is like the best anime series ever. I'm like, it wasn't really. The first episode was like, fucking awesome, but like, other than that, it was like, meh. Nothing special. Um, Purple Popsicle 10 says, opinion on Chobits. It was cute. I'd, I, I like Chi. Chi, Chi was cute. I, I like Chi. Yeah. I'd have one. If I could. Only wish. Somebody please develop something like that. Uh, Morishige Sakutaro says, What is the evilest anime character you could think of? Uh, no freaking idea. Oyashiro-sama. Because he kills everybody. Um... Can we be friends, says Omnomi. Of course, you're all my friends. Don't, don't, you, no need to ask. You're already all my friends. Um. <clears throat> Snow's Leopard says, what do you think of this summer's anime season so far? I'm not actually watching a lot of it, because I've just been so busy with everything. Um, I'm only, like, seriously, like, watching a few. I'm watching, I think I'm only watching, like, Tokyo Ghoul and Sword Art Online. Um, I should start watching Akamega Kill as well because I heard that's really good. Yeah, other than that though. Uh, Bell Angel says, Anime you want to have a second or another season? Uh, Danshi Kogosen no Nichijou needs a second season right now. Lucky Star also needs a second season. Um, 
Om Nomi says, opinion on Boku no Pika. I haven't seen it, I haven't touched it, I don't want to see it, I don't want to touch it. End of story. <laughs> uh, Silly Socks says, you seen King of Thorn anime movie, if so, did you understand the ending? I haven't seen or heard of that movie before, so I have no freaking idea. Yeah, no idea. Uh, the anime addict says, in your opinion, what makes a good anime? <sighs> that is a very open question right there. Uh, what makes a good anime? It depends, but I think for me, it's the... I think for me, it's the... It's a combination of everything. It's a combination of story, character, plot development, character development, music, visuals, um, how much you can relate to the story, how much you get immersed in the story, uh, the story itself, whether you like it or not. It's everything. There's so many... I think that's what makes it difficult to make, like, the perfect anime. Because to everybody, everybody has a different opinion on how perfect an anime series is. Like, somebody may give, like, a series a 10 out of 10, while the person next to them gives it a 2 out of 10. You know, it's it's difficult. So, I think, you know, there are, so, there are too many... There's too many factors that need to be put into it to make it a perfect anime, or, like, even a great anime. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that's. I hope I answered your question. Um, uh, Yoshiki Kishinua says biggest pe biggest pet peeves in anime. Um, the biggest pet peeves. <sighs> Jeez, no idea. Like I said, there's there's too many to name. Yeah, there's, it depends on the series as well. Tyler Pointer says, did you ever watch Kokoro Connect? Yes, I did, and I fucking loved it. Thank you for asking. Um, Silly Sox says, are you a perv? Isn't everyone? Sparky Spark says, who's your favorite side character? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Sunohara from Clown Ad. <laughs> um, cool B41 or Brittany says, what is your favorite kind of Japanese candy? Uh, either, either Ramune or... Um, the Morinaga Caramels. I love them. Uh, Kimu Ravel, I think that's your name, is Do You Watch Hentai? Uh, every so often, yes. Uh, AJ Thunder says, What's your favorite school anime uniform? Uh, Jesus. No idea, to be honest. All of them are cool, I guess. I don't know. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, Michael Bernardio says, Joey, what would you rate Hoshizora Kakura Hashi out of 10? I actually liked Hoshizora Kakura Hashi. I don't know. It was, it was fun. I played the game as well. Uh, the original Echi game. Or the hentai game. Um, I liked it. I liked the game as well. Um, probably, I could probably give it like a 7.5 or an 8. Yeah, it was decent. I liked it. Uh, Om Nomi says, if there was an anime world, would you go there? Uh, Hell yeah. Of course. Silly Sox says, have you ever watched a horror hentai? No, because I'm not fucked up like some people. I watch hentai, but not that kind of hentai. That's fucked up. I don't know how anyone can stand that shit. It's like, oh. I mean, you know, everyone has a right to their own opinion. It's just weird. Uh, Kyle Jewell says, uh, your opinions on Sora no Otoshimono. It was okay. The main character's voice is annoying as shit, though. Jesus Christ, they could have gotten somebody else. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the next season. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Heskey says, do you play visual novels? Uh, every so often, yes. Like I said, I played Hoshizora Kakura Hashi one time. Uh, for a few hours. That was a fun game. Um, and of course, I'm, I'm like, I finished, uh, cl uh, I'm not finished, but like, I finished an arc on Clan Ad, and uh, which I need to get back to once I have the time. Uh, yeah, I like, I like visual novels. They're fun. Um, the Laugh Lab? The Laugh Lab? I don't know. Says, did you already watch Attack on Titan? Of course I did. Who hasn't? Uh... Okay, Edward Elric says, okay, now that you're past favorite anime, what about your favorite hentai? Fuck. Ah, <laughs> uh, did you really just ask that question, man? I don't... Oh. Um... I feel so awkward answering this. 
Uh, Kanojo, Kanojo, Kanojo is my favorite. There you go. Look it up. Kanojo X, Kanojo X, Kanojo. There you go. Thank me later. Uh, the Laugh Lab says, Your opinion on Helsing? It was good. I liked it. Uh, Michael ben- Bernardin- Bernardoni says, Do you like Junibyo or the Mokoyinga State? I do. I do like Junibyo. Nika is like so moe. I fucking love her so much. Oh my god. Oh my god. If she was a little bit more normal, I'd totally fucking ship her with myself. I mean, what? <laughs> the Animatic says, How would you react if Titans existed? Um, probably shit bricks. Like everybody else. Yep. And then I'd hide away. Um, yeah. I'd hide away somewhere. Uh, Jordan Stern says, Your opinion on Full Metal Alchemist, if you've ever seen it? Uh, Brotherhood was better. Both are pretty good. If you guys like mainstream anime, go watch it. Um... Okay, Seiko Shinohara says, There's a girl in my school who acts like they know they're shit on anime, and I'll ask, what did you watch? And they'll say, I've only seen Naruto, and I'm just like, really? Oh, that wasn't a question. I just saw the question mark at the end, so I figured it was a question. Um, Seiko Shinohara, you can tell that your friend, or that, that girl at your school, that she's fucking retarded. Uh, Sparky Spark says, what is your opinion on incest in anime? I... Jeez. Um, it's... I don't want, I, I like, you know, everyone says, oh no, it's morally wrong and it like, shouldn't happen and it's too fucking weird. I'm like, get over it. It's like, at least it's not happening in real life. Who cares? You know, you can, fucking, the Japanese can do whatever the fuck they want with it. But yeah, um, yeah. Maggie Taylor says, ever cried because of anime? Yes, of course. Clown out after story, Angel Beats and, um... Gosh, my God, I just had a brain freeze there. What? Oh, crap, what was the name? Anohana. Those three series, I cried like a bitch in. Uh, Otaku on Panzer says, Joey, uh, what's your favorite yaoi ship? I don't ship anyone with yaoi because yaoi is like, no! Get me the hell away from that. Please, please do not put me anywhere near that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, no. Uh, Purple Pop School 10 says, what do you think about Hitalia? It was okay. Um, I'm not so much into history, so... A lot of a lot of the jokes I didn't quite get, but it was a cute little series while it lasted. Uh, Bell Angel says, have you ever played any, any MMORPGs? Yes, I have. I used to play MapleStory a lot. Um, other than that, not much. During high school, though, I used to play this awesome... I mean, RuneScape, obviously, was the first MMORPG I ever played. After that, um, I moved on to this really interesting MMORPG called Kingdom of Loathing, which is like those classic MMORPGs... Those classic RPGs where it's just text-based. But it's re- it was really fun. Really awesome. I played that game for, like, a good four or five years during high school. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that was awesome. Um... Go check it out, guys. Kingdom of Loathing. It is a great game. I'm sure you get into it. Ordinary Otaku says, Favorite anime lolly. <laughs> um, shit. Uh, there's too many to name. Probably Konata. <laughs> yeah. Fucking love Konata so much. Oh my god. Fucking just, I just love Lucky Star in general. It's so cool. It's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyways, guys, um, I think that's about it for this, uh, podcast. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I can't believe 78 of you are still watching this. It is great. Uh, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed doing this, guys, and I appreciate so many of you guys come out and listen to this, and so many of you guys listen, go out and listen to the podcast. Um... Like I said, to all you guys again, like I said, um, who are watching this live right now, if you guys missed any part of this or um, missed uh, completely missed it, you know, com- like missed it completely, then in the description below of every video that I do and also on the about section, like my links on my channel, if you go to my SoundCloud page, all the podcasts and all past podcasts will be up there in full for you guys to listen to and also f- as free download. So you'll never miss one already. Uh, or you, you'll never miss one again. Um, but yeah, guys, um, thank you guys for coming along to this beautiful morning and spending this beautiful morning with me. Um, yeah, 
is uh, I don't know when I'm gonna be doing the next one, but uh, thanks, thanks guys, and I, and I'll see you guys in the next podcast whenever I make it. I need to do something about this outro, and I just burped. Oh my god, I'm really starving right now, and it's almost like lunchtime. So I'm gonna go get some food. Anyways, guys, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys later. Ciao.